You can read about all the wonderful things he's been recognized for in the program. I will add a personal note that I've only had the pleasure of meeting him because of DIMAX and his excellent work as a host for the international component of the REU program. And he'll tell us about 30 years of discrete mathematics. Thank you very much. It's a really pleasure to be here. It's not the first time I'm here. I was here many times before. I will say something about it later on. So as you guessed, uh, DM is not for DIMAX, but it's uh, for discrete mathematics. And uh, as uh, discrete mathematics is a part of that acronym, and it was certainly one of the chief original motivation of the center, uh, I think it's only appropriate that we have a lecture or a few lectures uh, as a part of this celebratory uh, program. I hope it will work. Yes, so here is a, say, another version of that uh, introduction talk, and this is, uh, I like to put a picture on it. Uh, this is just to prove that the, the uh, Eldridge uh, Hotel is not the nicest uh, place on the earth. There are other places. <laughs> and, uh, and if you ever, if you ever come, oh, here is a step. If you ever come to Prague, then then this window, which I'm pointing at, is my window. So it's depicted certainly on the picture. But I cannot. Oh, here yeah, I can. Can this appear? That's my window. <laughs> the, but I think that. Uh, inspired by other talks uh, yesterday and today. Uh, the, I want to say something at the beginning. Uh, 30 years of DIMEX is not the only anniversary which is uh, associated with 79. For example, we have uh, 20 years of our, our collaboration with the students, you know, with this international review. That's as well memorable. Uh, memorable anniversary. It's very long anniversary for a project like that. And uh, there is as well 50 year of anniversary that I met Fred, you know. So I don't know if maybe except of the family, if anybody, if anybody can match uh, this, uh, uh, this in the hall. I met him in 69 at the conference where we were students and fresh, uh, fresh ex-students and uh, it was, uh, was very nice. I mean, so it's, amaz it's amazing that we survived 50 years, right? So the <laughs> <laughs> but there is another anniversary, oh. which is... <laughs> and, uh, but there is another anniversary, which is, uh, which is uh, non-mathematical, and, uh, and this is uh, my country, um, Czech Republic, or Czechoslovakia, before it has a 30 year of anniversary of the Velvet Revolution, when the, when the orientation of the country radically changed, you know. So I couldn't resist to show you a few few pictures of it. I mean, which are it's from a booklet which uh, which was uh, published on the occasion of it. You know, in fact, this is very close to our faculty, and that was sort of decisive meeting which started it all. And uh, and, uh, and then this is uh, just a su last su last uh, Sunday uh, Sunday picture taken at the memorial in Prague of of Václav Havel. And the guy in front is my grandson, Prokop. <laughs> and, uh, and this is really a light motive of, uh, of, of my talk, because, uh, I mean, who would think 30 years ago that things like it will happen? And I want to uh, speak about, in mathematics, about uh, who would think 30 years ago that I will be able to take a picture like that, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but who sees that the structure graph theory moves towards uh, stability theory, I mean. And who would think 30 years ago that Ramsey theory moves towards uh, topological dynamics, I mean. And, and who would say that the complexity of colorings and, and then the more the more uh, contemporary version complexity of CSP, constraint satisfaction problem, will find a setting in universal, which are really proper setting in the universe. And who would say that the study of finite properties will lead to study of limits, I mean, or the continuous object of the structural limits. Yeah. 
And there are many more. I mean, so I mean, I just selected those which are close to my heart, and I will speak about it. And there are many more. I think the combinatorics and graph theory is an extremely active field within mathematics. And uh, and I think we are sort of living in very, very fortunate time. I mean, every every month it's appearing a solution of some old problem, and uh, and uh, there are appearing new paradigms which uh, which somehow are really. Uh, uh, really uh, supporting uh, very active development. And uh, in my lecture, I want to speak, uh, of course, I can give just a, a few glimpses of, of it, and I will speak about the Ramsey theory, which was mentioned. I will uh, we'll speak about structural graph theory, and I will at the end say a few words about the limits. It will be no technical. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, about Ramsey theory, first part. Yeah. Well, we know what is Ramsey theorem, I mean, which is above it, I mean, the full version. There is a, it's a small generalization of it, or small generalization, important generalization, that you can say the same statement you can formulate basically for any, for any structure. Yeah. If you take any, so it's, a for, it's formulated at the bottom of the slide for any two objects uh, somewhere, you know, for example, sets, as in Ramsey theorem, and for a natural number k, there exists ob another object c in the same class, uh, such that c, c arrows. If you don't know what, I don't expect that you know what this arrow, arrow this arrow is imp simple statement, you know. It's a, it's a statement that if you color subsets or subobjects of the c in, in uh, k colors, you will get a given subobject, which is a given set with all its uh, p element subset or all its subobjects isomorphic to A in the same class. So it's a, it's a, it's a really uh, word to word, I mean, set, say, abstraction of this finite, finite Ramsey theorem. In that such a case, we say that it is Ramsey class. It's like an ultimate generalization of the, of the Ramsey theorem to the class, class C. And, uh, and there are examples of Ramsey classes, and they were originated before uh, 89. Uh, there is, uh, and I formulated here the theorems about the graphs. I mean, that's, uh, and uh, these are, uh, I mean, complete graphs. That's a Ramsey theorem. I mean, all ordered graphs are a Ramsey class. All the KK free graphs are Ramsey graphs uh, because it's usually done with induced subgraphs, so the complementary classes are as well. As, a, as well as well Ram, forming Ram, Ramsey class. That, uh, that was proved, uh, several uh, ingredients of it were proved uh, by the, the hardest result. These are these KK free graphs are Ramsey, and then we proved this with uh, Voita Redl, I mean, in, in 70s. Now, but it's a su surprising twist, I mean, it, which came exactly at 89, I mean, that is, which is leading t to it, uh, to the, to the, to the model theory. So the every Ramsey class, in fact, is the H, so it means a, stra is a set of all the finite substructures of some fixed, say, fixed infinite set, and which that wouldn't be much, you know, because then you could take this joint union of it, but this, um, but this set is ultra homogeneous. It has all possible symmetries, I mean. Every, every isomorphism between any two finite parts can be extended to isomorphism of the whole thing. And from that follow surprising result, which is from this 89, is that the about the, uh, these above classes are all Ramsey class. There are no other. I mean, there are no other Ramsey class except of those which are. And uh, that was uh, really started of the development uh, some 15 years ago, uh, later, Kekris, Pestov, and Tudorcevich proved a uh, far reaching uh, generalization of it. I mean, I mean, they prove that if you have, uh, under small assumption, I will not say what is this or the property, but uh, if, if, you have a, if you have a meaningful class of structures, particular graphs, then the following statements are equivalent. This uh, symbol is a well-known mind symbol for the following system. The statements are equivalent. So uh, <coughs> C is a Ramsey class, or C is a H, of an ultra homogeneous structure, and the ultra homogeneous structure has a particular group structure. I mean, a topological group structure. It's an extremely amenable subgroup of, a, of the all permutation, topological group of all permutation on omega. That's amazing that it's a if and only if, and that started really 
great development which is on the boundary on the boundary of uh, of uh, combinatorics i mean I mean, so far, I mean, it looks, uh, and uh, well, let me say, uh, uh, combinatorics and uh, model theory or topological theory. I mean, it's a, so far, the combinatorics, it's a really vital uh, connection because so far, uh, all the good examples of, or uh, all, the, all the examples of, of this Ramsey class are coming from combinatorics. They are proved by combinatorial, combinatorial methods. On the other hand side, this necessity that, it's, uh, that it is, uh, uh, that the, the characterization, like for graphs, I mean, which is here, that is leading in opposite direction. It's using a model theory. This theorem, which is that this corollary is difficult. On the positive side, you have to prove this, uh, that these classes are Ramsey, which we did with Redl, and that's non trivial thing even now, after all the years. On the other hand side, you have to, there are no other, right? But it's Lachlan, Lachlan Woodrow theorem about uh, classification of ultra homogeneous structure, which is a difficult theorem too. There is not a simple proof of it. So it's a really fruitful collabo uh, interaction of the, of the two things. And that's what I want to, who would think about it in said years ago, that it will happen. Yeah, I, mean, I have far more, much more, some more examples, I mean, and uh, actually if you are interested, and there is, uh, just was published uh, in Advances of Mathematics, uh, uh, my paper with Hubička, which is called All Those Ramsey Classes, and uh, it's, a, it's a book, it's a 90 pages paper. <laughs> Structural graph theory. Maybe I should have a look at the, at the timing. Yeah. Okay, that's that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, structure graph theory. Well, with this, I mean, uh, there are basically two two streams. One, uh, one highly successful and very very well known uh, um, approached in, in graph theory, uh, and that is usually associated with our structural graph theory. It's a theory of minors, a geometrically based theory of minors, which was initiated even before 89 uh, with uh, Robertson, Seymour, and all the collaborators, Robin Thomas, Maria, uh, Chudnowski, and uh, others. And it's very active by now. So. I mean, we approach this little bit from, from the different angles through the sparsity. I mean, I mean, it's a very nice paper of uh, Emmanuel Candes from, from ICM, I think six years ago, which was, speaks about, which is the title of the paper, Mathematics of Sparsity. Yeah. So that was our kind of uh, closer to, to this, what I will say. And, uh, and it's a really, really little bit funny, almost funny, uh, how, how this developed. It started really from investigating sparse classes but it ended with a very concise definition, which I admit is, is, uh, which I admit is uh, li slightly misleading. I mean, it's looking like a curiosity almost, a combinatorial curiosity. curiosity. Three notions, no verdance, some verdance, and bounded expansion. We, we have a class of graphs. Think of uh, planar graphs, think of bounded degree graphs, cubic graphs, or something like that. You say that the class is no verdance, the class, the class may contain uh, complete graphs. It may contain uh, uh, subdivisions of complete graph. But if it, if every very large subdivision of complete graph has to be subdivided many point, by many points. Yeah. So this is the meaning of the definition. So I mean, if you, if you restrict how many points you are using on sub the subdivision points on edges, then there is a bound on the size of the, of the complete graph. Combinatory curiosity. Right? So, you say somewhere, the graph is somewhere dense if this is not true. So if there exists some D, some number of some number, so that the class will contain sub, uh, subdivision of complete graphs where every edge is subdivided at most D times. So, so basically this is, this is, these are dense classes, right? I mean, up to some interpretation, up to, up to the subdivision uh, that uh, it contains, on the bounded subdivision, it, uh, it contains arbitrary large complete R. This was isolated by, with me by my friend uh, and my, uh, uh, one of my most frequent collaborators uh, recently, Patrice Osona de Mendes, who is from Paris and, and Prague too. And uh, so that is, in this case, you can say that this complete graph 
which was on the previous slide, where the average is subdivided, and most of the times it's a shallow topological minor of the depth team, <coughs> of the depth team. This depth meaning that how, many, how much are subdivided. I mean, so topological minor would be that it is unrestricted. <coughs> And you say, and there is a vertex version or not a topological version, shallow minor, it means that you can, you can contract, like in minor, some, some blobs which are connected, but you restrict the radius of it. Every, every blob has a radius at most D. That, you, that was, in fact, uh, it's a very nice notion which was isolated by computer scientists, uh, Miller, Babasis, Tank, and Thurston, if you consider him a computer scientist. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and then the, the, the third notion which I want to say is bounded expansion. And the bounded expansion is that if you do those bounded radius contractions, I mean, then you always get a graph which has a bounded average degree. Not a bounded degree, bounded average degree, which is the same as to say that is degenerated. Graph is degenerated. I have a picture for it. That uh, if there is an ordering of it so that the number of edges going to the, to the left is, uh, is a bounded. I mean, and, I mean this is... Uh, <laughs> This, this, I mean, this look like really like a combinatorial curiosity, and in fact, uh, I'm saying it in the anti-chronological time because this is this is after many uh, results and simplifications. Uh, this is uh, this seems to be somehow most uh, uh, concise concise definition of 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 this. Of these things, it's like a minor theory, but there is a time, the time which is uh, which is uh, which is indicated by this d, right? You first contract neighbors or subsets of neighbors, then you contract something from the second neighborhoods, and so on. I mean, and each place you cannot get uh, all the graphs. This is uh, this is this uh, what uh, this no evidence uh, basically means. And bounded expansion is means it's a bounded expansion is a. It's a stronger notion than uh, a more restricted notion than the nowhere dense. I mean, then every bounded expansion in class is, is a nowhere dense, but it, it's a strict. I mean, these uh, classes, these uh, strange classes of graphs which have a higher, gets higher than the average, than the, than the, than the uh, minimum degree, you know, which I like to call these are Erdish classes because he proved many, many nice theorems about them. And in fact, he was with Sachs the first who somehow constructed them in the 60s. They are example of, uh, of nowhere dense classes which are not uh, bounded expansion classes. These no nowhere dense classes may have unbounded chromatic number, for example, as it follows from, from, from this. Bounded expansion have a bounded chromatic number. Yeah. And uh, we wrote a book on racial break, you know, another picture. I like to put pictures at the lecture. And, and here is a hierarchy uh, of the, of the, this, um, I mean, the, uh, there are classes which are derived from three, the, the three depths, I mean, uh, uh, classes which are essentially quasi-finite, I mean, uh, proper minor closed classes, I mean, which uh, uh, are fitting in this hierarchy, bounded expansion, every bound, uh, uh, nowhere dense, and somewhere dense. And these, all these differences are strict, and this is basically uh, reasonably well understood, what, what these classes are. <coughs> For example, what is in bounded expansion and not proper minor closed class, and that was somehow the one of the motivation. Uh, cubic graphs, graphs which have a bound, uh, degree bounded by three. They are, they are bounded expansion because if you contract binary radiuses, you get only bounded degrees. I mean, and this is uh, this is the condition. And of course, they are not uh, not uh, proper minor, or they are not proper minor closed classes. I mean, <coughs> and. Uh, but it's, a, it's a, not only that. I mean, really, this is extremely stable uh, hierarchy, or it's a, it is a, virtually every combinatorial property, independence number, dominating number, I mean, all these can be turned to the alternative definition of, the, of, this, of, this, uh, of this hierarchy, of this, classi of this classification. And that is actually the, maybe the uh, chief uh, advantage of it, and that's investigated by many these days. And for example, we have, you have the following theorem, I mean, that uh, for a monotone class of graphs, 
I mean, let's say, uh, for monotone class of graphs, I mean, for, it should be graphs, I mean. Uh, then the following statements are equivalent. C is nowhere dense. C is a stable in the sense of Shellach, which basically means that, I mean, the order, ordering is not definable. I mean, it's a pure logical concept of the theories. C is a nip, which is, a, which is that uh, it's, a, it's a bounded uh, VC dimension in a certain sense. And a completely, uh, completely um, uh, algorithmic condition that uh, the so model checking, model checking has uh, almost linear algorithm for it. Uh, and this, uh, of course, the last one is modulo, modulo the complexity assumption that uh, this uh, pa parameterized complexity hierarchy doesn't, that doesn't collapse. That uh, of course has to be. Co and that was proved by by us, and then it was uh, uh, complemented by others. I mean, for the stable and uh, NIP classes, of course, originated with uh, Shellach and uh, Porewski and Ziegler have early paper on the, some classes of uh, graphs which are, which are stable. And the connection was actually uh, uh, realized by Adler and Adler. It's an node, I mean, which if you combine all these definitions, I mean, this, uh, this more, uh, linearity of uh, 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 almost linearity, uh, what does it mean, almost linearity? It's uh, n to 1 plus epsilon for any epsilon. So almost linearity was proved after the previous uh, 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 results by, by several people, by Grohe, uh, Kreutzer, and Siebert. And it's not only it, I just put there, it's a, it's a, you may define these classes by counting, you may define them by universality of categories. And I mean, it's a really very, very robust, uh, very, very robust uh, de, um, de definition. And I will return to it in a surprising twist at the end. So I mean, this is another example of such a, uh, such a, uh, such a thing. I will be very, very pleased with this, with this connection. This uh, stable theory. This is really one of the, one of the driving force of the model theory. In the uh, started by Shellach, and now we, it's, a, of course, the monotonicity uh, the city, uh, condition is uh, natural from the combinatorial example. It is less, less natural if you speak if you speak about the theories. And uh, presently there are a lot of activities on, on to, to change it to hereditary, for example. And and uh, in the January soda is a long paper of us about it. I limit. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm running. So the limits of of graphs or, or structures. I mean, they were uh, developed, actually, the Microsoft Research, I mean, Tory Group, it developed in the <clears throat> some 10 years ago, the Slovas and uh, Balash Segeri, Jennifer, Christian, other people. It's uh, quite an industry, it's a lot of, lot of results. And in the full generality, one can approach it as follows. I mean, it's uh, nothing special about the graphs, nothing special about the uh, relation that uh, you can express it, I mean, in the full general term. This is a line of research which, uh, which, uh, which we initiated with, with Susana de Mendes. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the only, only thing which you should look on this slightly clumsy, clumsy uh, slide is this phi A. Yeah? So, if you have a phi, it's a formula, and there are some free variables, so they are say p, three variables, x1 up to xp, then this phi a, and a is some structure, or a is some graph, then the phi a is a, a sort of a solution set for the formula in the, in the, in the, in the, in the graph, in the structure. So it is a set of p tuples, so that if, if this p tuple is inserted into your formula for the, uh, for the free variables, this formula is satisfied. Right, so, so it's a, if phi is, a, uh, I mean, there are two points which are at uh, distance two, distance two, so, uh, which is the first order formula, so it would be set of pairs which are at the distance two. Yeah, that's uh, like that. yeah. And uh, stone, stone pairing, or stone bracket, is a, is a probability. In fact, it's a probability uh, that uh, the given p-tuple is satisfying the 
satisfying a formula. So it's the size of the solution set divided by all possible. All possible. Stone is coming because in part of this theory, the uh, uh, stone duality and two types of play, play a role, and uh, which is of course extremely pleasing uh, from mathematical point of view. And uh, so we, this is where the name is coming from. And uh, and we say that. That sequence of structures, sequence of graphs, I mean, is, converg is X convergent, and X is some set of formulas, it's a fragment, it's a, some set of formula, it's X uh, convergent, if all these brackets of this pairing are converging for any formula in the class, in, this, in that class, yeah. So for any phi in, the, in your class, the, this is converging. These are real numbers, right? This phi, phi a, this is a real number between 0 and 1. So you just want that these numbers in the converge as n and goes to infinity. So this sequence of graphs a n, so denoted by a n, a n is uh, converging if all these numbers are converging for any, for any formula from your class. There are irrelevant fragments, I mean, which is, uh, of course, it's studied for particle fragments, and the expressive power of this is very large. In fact, it contains all the limits which were, which were considering. For example, if you, it was not considered, well, it was considered too, they, if you take the sentences which have no free variables, that basically means that, uh, that the formula is either valid or not valid, you know, for a, uh, it's either valid from certain point on, or it's not valid from certain point on. So it's called elementary uh, convergence. It's, <coughs> if you take quantifier free, you get uh, you get convergence uh, based on, on the homomorphisms uh, or or the cut metric. I mean, which is uh, which is uh, uh, which in fact goes back to statistician Aldous and Hoover, and it was uh, then uh, in this formulation. Uh, in, in, originated by Lovas and all his uh, collaborators. I mean, it's another important style is uh, so-called Benjamin Schramm, uh, Schramm convergence, which is uh, leading to the uh, sparse classes, leading to bounded expansion, bounded uh, degree, uh, degree graphs, and uh, and it can be as well expressed in this way, in the in the for F O one for the local formulas and formulas which have only one free variable. But the ultimate goal on all this theory is, and that's really catching, I mean, and it's uh, related to, uh, to, to all the problems related to the large networks and, uh, and uh, web-like or brain-like uh, uh, structures. And in fact, there is a, a recent uh, collaborative uh, big grant, which is, the, which is called Dinasner, which is uh, which is devoted, I and mean, where there is actually study of limits is essential, essential part of it. Ultimate goal is to find a structure, graph, so that you could put a hand on it and you derive all these properties of the finite from it. That you derive that you that the, this uh, this uh, this infinite object will somehow express all these limits, uh, limiting limiting probabilities. I mean. And, uh, and that can be approved approach in various sense. Uh, original was uh, some probabilistic distributional sense. I mean, then then it came non-standard approach of it. Actually, there was not a non-standard approach to it, but it was uh, it's a, it was developed for the hypergraph regular semi-ready regularity lemma. I mean, and uh, and of course there, then there are objects like. Uh, Charcoal graphon and graphing, I mean, which somehow have this property for this uh, for this particle example, and and this actually can be uh, expressed even in the full generality in the for this uh, for the limits in this uh, F O limit uh, X limits which I which was on the previous slides, and. Uh, and the, these first parts, I mean, without uh, my changes and the Wagner proof theorems, which are, which are, uh, of that all these earlier results are, are corollaries of it. And uh, but one can as well uh, uh, define in the full uh, notion of modeling, which I will do in the next slide, which is somehow uh, giving possible, which is generalizing this graphon and, and and graphing. And what is it? I mean, that's uh, so the. So this modeling, it's a, 
I mean, it's easy to say it's standard borderless space uh, or on the universum of the of the structure uh, such that if you take not only that it's a standard borderless space on the but, but it should be that the structures which are there, for example, edges are for, are forming borel set in the sec, in the x square in the power in the second power of the uh, of the uh, of the um, of the vertices. So with, with respect to product product measure, and not only that, if you if you now take a, some uh, notion of p tuples, you take any formula you consider which have p free variables, you get a set which is a subset of uh, vertices to the p, and it should be the, this set should be always measurable. So all the first order definable sets, which are uh, on your set, should be uh, should be should be measurable, <coughs> and, uh, and that makes sense. I mean, so it was studied earlier Borel uh, Borel graphs, where you don't have this definability. It's just about the uh, number of edges that was studied by by Kaklisoletsky uh, um, uh, and and it's, the notion is actually close to Harvey Friedman, uh, totally borrowed structures, which, uh, which uh, I don't think he published it, but it was rewritten so, uh, by, by Steinhorn. Yeah. And, uh, and you can express this, uh, this, uh, this stone bracket can be express, uh, extended to this infinity. And yeah, thank you. Hey, I'm at the end, yeah. And, uh, and so just to show, I mean, the, uh, when this modeling, and I want just to show the last slide, it's leading to cluster analysis, but it's, a, it's not an abstract blah, 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 as you would think, but uh, it's, a, and, uh, and the corollary of it is that uh, the four hundred of monot of class over graphs, the following statements are equivalent. I mean, the grass is nowhere dense, and then there are these uh, first order modeling limits. It's a completely analytic description. Remind you what was the nowhere dense? That was this putting points on the complete graphs, right? So uh, forbidding it, right? And that's uh, that there is analytic description. So that it, this was recently published. But I have uh, one minute, and I want to say still something, and uh, and uh, uh, something personally, and uh, and that I think is important. Yeah. So it was several times mentioned at the DIMAX that uh, what was this uh, motivation of the, that it was uh, fostering research and fostering education, fostering education. Well, that's not, uh, that sounds normal, right, today? But it was not. 30 years ago, that was novelty. And in fact, there were the, the idea of centers was, uh, was a new. I mean, there was not, it was, uh, of course, there were uh, institutes, but it was so for mathematics, institute of the big things. It would be center for something, I mean, uh, for studies, some, however broad, but particular part of mathematics. That was very, very new. I, I came to, to DIMEX early in that, uh, the beginning of uh, the 90s, and uh, I liked it very much. I somehow felt that here is something new for it, and I wanted to to do something like like it in in Prague or in the Europe yeah and uh, for that you have to wait for opportunity right so, and in fact if there is an opportunity that opportunity came about 96 or 95 96 but as we know in academia the window time window when you can do something is very limited it's very short you know as it appeared I had to prepare uh, the proposal almost overnight, I mean, or in a matter of days. And, uh, and so when, this, when I realized that it would be possibility, thanks to some larger grant, the same situation, larger grant and uh, friendly, uh, friendly administration or quasi-friendly administration. And uh, so, so I, I mobilized my friends, uh, particularly young Kratochville, and uh, we started to work. But I, I didn't know what, what, the, what the plan, right? There was nothing like it around. So I, so I asked my friend, I sent a letter to Ron, an email to Ron, uh, Graham, and Fred Roberts, and uh, they would send me their proposals for some institutes, I mean. And they very in full, including the money, so that I could see what are the proportions. I didn't know how much secretaries you should have, how much you should, uh, what should be percentage for travel or whatever. I mean, it was 
So I generally, uh, very generously, I receive it by return mail. I return mail, and, and we were working overnight or two days, and, and we succeeded, right? And we have it, and, and we still have it now. And uh, what? <laughs> could you show me? Could you show me the last slide, please? I mean, uh, last slide. I mean, I know I'm ending. Yes. But, uh, so see you at uh, Dimatia. This is our center, I mean, which is uh, pattern. We still alive 30 years later or 20, 23 years later. And so see you at Dimatia at the 30. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.